morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning.
A month out from our friend day, it's a very special service. We're celebrating our two-year anniversary as a church, which is awesome. And then we're also going to be just inviting as many people as we can to celebrate with us. We're going to have um, food afterwards, lunch. And then we're also going to have uh, shaved ice from Kona Ice, and it's going to be a great day. So all that you guys can um, come to that. There's some door hangers on the back, invites um, at our Next Steps table. You can grab those and invite some people to come with you. Um, and then we have a couples refresher coming up in September 22nd through the 23rd. All right, if you're interested in just growing within your marriage, refreshing that, and finding, um, again, just connecting to the Lord together, this is a great thing to go to. It's a two-day um, with multiple sessions involved. It's just in the East Bay over in Fremont. And you can sign up. There's a QR code in your handout today. You can sign up in that with that QR code. And here's the thing. Um, I think it's like $125 for both both people to, together, so one couple is $125, but if you sign up this week and email me your confirmation, then our church will cover half of that cost, all right? And so we'll reimburse you because it's very important if you could try to make it to this, to go out. And here's the thing, this was the kicker for me that made it true, is like, they offer child care. I was like, all right, well, uh, go now, all right? For sure. So, um, so there's, there's ch child care is included with that cost, so um, if you can, um, it'd be a great thing to do that, and you can sign up this week. Um, today is a very special and unique Sunday because we are ordaining Sam Dag into the gospel ministry, which is awesome, right? Yeah. So this is a, it's going to be a unique service, different than what we normally do, um, but it's going to be one that's a long time coming. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but just so you know, afterwards, um, at 1 o'clock, there's going to be an after party. We're going to be um, just celebrating the ordination, but also saying goodbye. There's several of our people that are be moving away this fall, um, like John. John, wait. Okay, John, okay, he is moving away. Actually, this is his last Sunday with us, so make sure you give John hugs and come to the party and, and talk to him and, and, and wish him well that as well. But um, So it's going to all be all, also double as a goodbye party for several people that are leaving. But that's at 1 o'clock from 1 to 3 at my house. The address is in your handout as well, and everybody is invited to come to that and have food and just a fun time being there together. All right, um, as always, we like to start up our worship by giving back to God. If you are new here, we don't expect you to give, but if you're a branches member, you can give in the giving box or online. And then we're going to go ahead and get into our prayer time. Um, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, in verse 1, the Bible says that when a man desires the office of a bishop or a pastor, he desires a good work. And so today is going to be focusing on that, on ordaining Sam into ministry. And so we're going to go ahead and have a time of silent prayer now. I just want to ask you whether you know him or you don't know him, just pray for Sam and his family as we get started. So let's go ahead and bow in prayer, and then I'll pray afterwards. Lord, we just come to you now, and we're just so thankful for who you are, that you are a great God that just looks after us, that takes care of us, Lord, that provides for us. And Lord, today, as we just focus in on this very special Sunday, as we ordain Sam, and for the ministry that you've called him to, Lord, I just pray that you would just bless him. Lord, I pray that you just always keep his eyes focused on you. And Lord God, I just pray as we think through just his call and his willingness to serve you, Lord, that we can all be willing servants of you as well. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you've done in our lives and what our hearts. I pray that you just open our hearts to the truth of your word today. Open us up to just receive whatever it is that you're trying to connect with us about, Lord, and, and teach us today. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And all these things we pray in your son's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you, John. Have a seat for just a second. So we wanted to uh, start off today, the ordination service, um, and I wanted to talk about a couple things um, before we kind of move on with our more songs in our service, is first is um, what is ordination, and then second, um, who is Sam, all right? Um, and so we're going we're gonna to go over both those things, but ordination, is, there's also a blurb on the back of your handout, but ordination is simply a church confirming the call, the giftings, the doctrine, and the maturity 
of a man for gospel ministry. It's uh, in the Bible in Acts chapter uh, 13, it talks about how the church ordained um, the pastors, Paul and Barnabas, to go out for the ministry that God had called it to them, and uses this word separate. It's a separate calling than many of us else have than, um, than many of us have, right? A lot of us are called by God. We're all called to make disciples and reach others for Jesus. Many of us are called in different ways, whether that's to be a doctor or janitor or whatever else it is. But a pastor is a very specific and separate call. It's the only call that we see in the Bible that comes with requirements given by God in order to fulfill that role. And so last month, what we did is we gathered, we questioned Sam, and we went through, make sure he had the right doctrine, right teachings, and right maturity to become a pastor, and our church voted to ordain him on this day. And so we're going to be kind of completing that process today. So that's ordination, but who is Sam? So whether you've been at Branches for a long time or not a long time, you haven't known Sam for a long time regardless. Um, uh, you haven't known him for that long because he is uh, uh, kind of new to the area, right? So most of the time, our church is only two years old. So I think Yulita, probably, who started joining our church before even COVID was the only other person. Um, and so they, he, she's known him for three years. But I want to go back farther than that. And how Sam kind of came um, to be, uh, just how he came to in his faith in Christ and how he's grown to know the Lord as well during that time. And so it all starts off really with um, his parents. And I want to just mention them for a second. Um, Tony, uh, his mom Tony, and his dad John are here today with us. Yeah. Sorry, the mic thing is not working on the thing, so I want to make sure people can hear. Um, so, uh, they're here today, and I wanted to start off this way. Sam was raised in a family that did point to God and faith in God, and so that started there. And I want to tell you guys something. Um, when you're a parent, and you have to watch your child, as well as your grandchildren, kind of go away, away far away from you, thousands of miles away from you, in service of the Lord, that is a hard thing, right? To leave, to see your kids go but I know that Tony and John have been crazy supportive of Sam and Maddie. I know that they regularly pray for them and care for them and are proud of them to see that. And so I want to just say thank you to Tony and thank you to John for your sacrifices of letting your kid and grandkids be out here with us um, to serve us in our church. So we have a gift from our church that we just want to give to you guys and just say thank you guys so much. of um, Sam started with his parents, obviously, um, pointing him towards the Lord. But Sam, and by his own um, testimony, would say that he didn't really live for Jesus. And Jesus definitely wasn't central in his life. And he, I was at a lunch even this last week when he was explaining his testimony and his story, and he was talking about how there was even a time in his life where he kind of even doubted the existence of God and, and whether God had anything to do in his life. But then God started to work in an incredible way. This is, uh, if it works, da, 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 da. all right, this is a picture of his dad in a wreck that he got in. Now, as you can see by the car, his dad should not be sitting here with us today, right? And after that, Sam put it this way. He said, if my dad survived that, there had to be a God. And so that started the journey of Sam seeking after God. And even though he didn't know really what he was looking for and how to get back to God and how to find and make Jesus central in his life, he started that process, and that's when um, Sam and I met each other at a place called Ship Shape Marine. I always, um, this, was, uh, this was when we were working together um, back in Ohio. I had moved there for five years and started a church there, and I worked at a job called Sh Ship Shape Marine, and I always call it my Ship Shape Seminary. That's a tongue twister, um, but because I learned more about serving people and ministry at that job than I did at four years prior to Bible college, but um, I had gotten a job there, and I'd worked there, and there wasn't a lot of Christians there, and several years later, Sam came on staff, and how we first kind of got connected, and it's actually a very interesting story, and it's something that only God works through, so Sam, um, and I hope you don't mind me telling this part, but Sam was looking for a job because he couldn't get one because he had failed a drug test, right? Again, he wasn't living for the Lord, and so he, he had looking for a job and it was interesting he had a friend named Jordan that had just got a job at Shipshape 
and Jordan was working with me. I was in charge of training Jordan. And so Jordan told Sam about this job, Sam got the job, and then Jordan quit, right? So it was like Jordan worked there like two weeks or something. But it was just enough time for God to work through Sam's life. And so one day, um, we, he hadn't been working there very long. We hadn't talked too much because we didn't work on the same crew. Um, the guys at work were kind of making fun of me for being a Christian or whatever, and they were like, <clears throat> they were like Jake, just whatever, man, just pray for us, da 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 make fun of me. And I was like, oh, whatever, I'll pray right now with you. Let's do it, right? Just kind of giving it back. And Sam overheard this conversation, and he said, I'll pray with you. And I was like, oh, oh really? Okay, <laughs> all right, let's pray. So right there, right after work, um, right in our warehouse, we bowed together and we began to pray. And I noticed from that that God was doing something in Sam's heart. So a couple weeks went by, and I invited Sam to do a Bible study with me. Um, what we refer to as discipleship. And if you've been through our discipleship here at Branches, it's the same process that we take you through here as we go over directions in the discipleship book there. It's the same process that I went through with Sam. So I invited him to do this, and he's like, yeah, sure. So we started meeting before work or after work, you know, talking over the Bible, digging into the scriptures. And through that process, Sam, again, by his testimony, says that that's when he truly started to give his heart completely over to Jesus. And he started making Jesus the Lord of his life and started shaping his life around the scriptures and around God being the central center point of his life. And so it was a little bit after that as well that Maddie accepted Christ as well as her Savior at a Christian conference. And so the two of them who had already been dating for multiple years were now followers of Jesus together. And it was um, after this, it was only lasted about a year there and before we started moving to come to San Francisco here. And I was speaking at the church that we had planted there, and Sam and Maddie were there, and, and I spoke about the need of more churches in San Francisco and the need to go there and, and to plant churches and reach people with the gospel. And it was after that that Sam started feeling the call to ministry and feeling the call to move with us to San Francisco. Um, this, this picture right here on your left is the last time that we saw them in Ohio before we actually came out to San Francisco. And that day we spent planning, we made a video, which you can still find on YouTube, um, of Sam and Maddie. Don't look um, it up. <laughs> and, and about them explaining how they're called to San Francisco. And so that's what started it there. And, and they um, felt that call to ministry and it led them to move here. Uh, they, uh, we moved out in August of, 20, of 2019. And they started their plans to move out here in January of 2020. And God worked in that, and they decided to leave everything behind. Now, here's what's so interesting, okay, them moving to San Francisco, is they had no job lined up. They had no house lined up. They had only what they could fit in the back of their small car, and that's it. And they said, we're going. And they moved here not knowing anything else but that. Now, that's an incredible amount of faith right there, especially from people that are just such young Christians in the Lord, right? But they decided to move just trusting the Lord to provide everything that they would need. And so they drove out here. They stayed with us for a bit, and God began to provide in some incredible and amazing ways. Um, they had to get to do their dream jobs a little bit, right? Um, the, Sam, the very first job that Sam got in San Francisco, and I, I couldn't find this picture, so you're lucky. Um, but the very first job he got was uh, standing down on the Embarcadero trying to convince people to donate to like a wildlife fund or something like that, uh, which is no one wants to talk to you when you're walking down and you're like, no, leave me alone. So it was a miserable like two days that he spent at that job. My birthday. It was, yeah, it was his birthday, uh, and he was telling us the story of all the, it was crazy events that happened even in that one day. Um, they gave him a shirt that was like four sizes too small, and that's the picture I'm talking about. It was like a professional shirt, but it was like tight. And um, he came home on his birthday that day. We were celebrating that night. He was, they were living with us at the time. He's telling us this story, and I was dying laughing, and he was just angry. And, um, <laughs> but uh, now it's funny. Now it's funny. All right, now it's funny. But although it took him a while, then they got a job at Amazon, and the pandemic hit. And they were able to actually get an apartment, and it's the same apartment building that they live in to this day. And they gave them the apartment before they even had job secure, which that's crazy in San Francisco. God's hand was on that. 
They got jobs at Amazon, met some awesome people. That was a perfect job for them for that time. And then eventually, Maddie got her job working as an occupational therapist, and Sam got his job working at the gym, in Sudsman Gym, and managing that, which was, for all intents and purposes, was definitely a dream job of his as well. And so God provided everything that they needed. And when you're willing to step out on faith, you don't know what it's going to happen, but you're trusting in God, God always provides for those that are serving him, always providing. And it's just a miraculous story, and um, I encourage you to go into more detail with it with them later about it. But as that happened, um, we started the church, right? And the pandemic happened, which really set us back. Um, but we found the creative ways to start, start the church, serve our community, whether it was through the coffee cart or street cleanups or giving out Easter eggs and bags, whatever it was, we, we tried to start this church. And Sam and Maddie remained faithful even through the pandemic to stick it out, so to go through that hardship when we had no idea what was happening. And trying to start a church in the pandemic was pretty much impossible. Um, but they stayed faithful. They stayed faithful to their calling. They stayed faithful to God, and they stuck it out. And we're all in this room today because of that. And I want to say this, too. Um, if you have enjoyed the Branches family, if you're part of this church, if you um, have enjoyed being part of this community, then I want to just say that you owe a huge debt of gratitude to Sam and Maddie. Because Branches, and I'll say this honestly and truthfully, Branches would not be the church it is today without the debt. Right? They, they have given so many things that you guys have never even seen, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours working behind the scenes, working to get the church started when it was just six of us in a room. Um, they have been faithful, and we owe them a great debt of gratitude because it wouldn't be the same without them. And while they were busy um, starting the church, they also got busy starting a family. Uh, and so... Uh, they had two of their kids, their precious um, children, Asa and Violet, and during that time as well, and growing their family and having two kids, two and under, is not recommended. You don't have to be like us and everything. Um, so, uh, the third one, that's going to that's gonna be hard. Um, so, uh, she's not pregnant, okay? I'm just saying, if there was a third one, okay? I'm not making any announcements. Um, so, but they had their family, and their family started growing, and during that time, all that time, the whole process from 2017, from discipleship, all the way until today, Sam has do, been doing pastoral training. Another thing that you guys probably haven't seen is kind of behind the scenes is throughout these three years that they've lived here, Sam and I have regularly gotten together at least once a week to go over the Bible, to talk through the ministry, to do things. He's, given, he's been given assignments and books to read, papers to write, to help him um, solidify himself in the truth and the doctrine of the word. And he's been given projects to do as far as leading outreaches and things like that, and has grown and grown and excelled in those things. And then this past month, it all came to culmination when our church voted to ordain Sam into ministry. And one thing, just to finish off this um, this this presentation before we get to the rest of the service is one big thing I want you to take away from Sam and Maddie is this. Sam and Maddie are just normal, everyday, regular people. They grew up in a small town amongst cornfields in northern Ohio, and they had never really experienced life outside of that small town. And yet, because they were willing, just because they were willing to do whatever it is God led them to do, God has used them in miraculous and amazing ways. God's used them to build this, this church here in San Francisco. God has used them to reach other people and give hope to hopeless and to spread the light of Jesus Christ. And if you could take anything away from their life, I would just say, take this away, that if you are willing, you don't have to know everything, you don't have to be good at everything, all this for Sam and Maddie Church and, and serving in the church and all this, it was brand new. It was a brand new thing for them. Almost everything that they've done, from Sam preaching to Maddie helping out with our finances of the church to doing all of these other things, was brand new for them. But they were just willing. Yeah. Willing to say, God, if this is what you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. And God used them for a great and mighty work. And so if we're willing today, then God can use us as well. Now, um, I want to warn you, at some point in this time, I haven't done it yet, which I'm very proud of myself, I will probably cry. Um, so, if I do, just forgive me. But, um, I put this intentionally in here because I thought I might be crying at this point. Um, but I wanted to end it with just kind of a funny thing. 
I wanted to show you guys something that probably none of you have ever seen before as well. This is probably brand new to you. Um, this is sandwich hair, all right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to show you that just so you've experienced it um, truthfully in your life, okay? At some point. But he looks far more handsome than that. So. <laughs> Looking good. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right, we're going to invite our musicians to come back up, and we're going to go ahead and have the rest of our, our music time before we get into the rest of the service. Next slide. <laughs> no, I say it whole time. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> now these got me all teary. <laughs> gonna get up here and do this, but if you guys would stand with us, we're gonna continue our worship. And just as Jake was talking through, I was just thinking about how their life um, so clearly depicts the truth that we're gonna sing in this song. Moving out here was hard. They've experienced some hard times throughout the process, and. Um, God, they've allowed Christ to continue to be their anchor through it all. And they have been faithful. Amen. They have been faithful to our church. They've been faithful friends to you guys, faithful friends to me. Um, they just embody this song so much. So as we sing this, um, I want this to be our prayer, but at the same time, we're praising a God who has transformed the lives of Sam and Maddie and who have enabled them to be just the incredible leaders and people that they are. So let's Amen. sing it out. Amen. You guys sing loud because I won't be, okay? So you guys sing it out. We're going to sing corners soon. <clears throat>
long before we um, get on with the rest of the services, you are my king, amazing love. And how many of you guys really believe that God's love is amazing? Amen. Amen. You believe God's love? Yeah, go line for you. It says this, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amen. And how true those lines are, huh? that we would not be where we are, we would have no hope of salvation were it not for the sacrifice that Jesus made. So sing this with us, you are my king. Amazing.
All right. Well, if you have um, a Bible today, we're going to look briefly in the book of First Timothy, or in Second Timothy, actually. Sorry. Um, and if you don't have a Bible, there's some on the back table. And um, if you don't have a Bible at home, we'd love for you to take one of those home. This is our gift to you for being here with us today. And just want to make sure that you have um, a Bible as well. Um, today, uh, this I'm going to speak briefly as, as I can. Um, this is known as, as the charge. So whenever you give, um, uh, whenever you give a, um, sorry, an ordination. Oh my goodness. Uh, whenever you give an ordination, uh, you give a charge, and it's customary to do this. In Second Timothy chapter four and verse one, Paul, the apostle, is writing to one of his proteges, a young pastor that he taught and helped, and he says this: "I charge thee." Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. And what he's saying there is, hey, here's some final commands. Here's some final um, exhortations that I want you to carry with you as you go on and as you, as you start your ministry. And so, although today, this talk that I'm about to give will um, apply to many of us in this room, this is directed at Sam. Um, this is your charge. This is... Um, some final advice for you as you start your ministry as a pastor. And so here's just five pieces of advice that I have for you um, as a pastor, Sam. And so again, we're going to be in 2 Timothy, and these all come here straight out of that passage. Um, but the first one is this. Do not fear. Do not fear. 2 Timothy 1, verse 6 and 7, this is what Paul writes to, um, to Timothy. He says this. Wherefore, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God. That's to say, hey, I'm reminding you of your calling, that you've set off for to be a pastor. I'm reminding you of that, which was put in thee by the putting on of my hands. And then verse 7, he says this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of a power of love, and of a sound mind. You know, Sam and Maddie, um, this, this thing of not showing fear, you guys really already exhibit that characteristic. I mean, again, think about how crazy it was for them to live their town, their small town, to leave their jobs, to leave their family, to come to a place that they had no job, had no family, had no guarantee of a house, had no guarantee that the church would work, and just to do that, right? Most of us would be very afraid just to move across town, right? But they moved across the country and without any guarantees, just trusting in the Lord alone. You guys have already exhibited that you don't have fear and you don't let the fears of this world trouble you down, but that you trust in the Lord. And so this spirit of fear, you know, when you go through your ministry, there's going to be a lot of different things that are going to come up, things that you're not used to handling, things that you've never done before, as you already know that. And there's going to be always that temptation to be afraid, to not take that step that Jesus is calling you to, to not do that thing that he wants you to do. Do not be afraid. God does not give us that spirit of fear. Instead, he says, have um, of love, have that, that spirit of power, of power from the Lord, of love. You know, when Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment was, he said, it's to love God with all his heart, your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Never let fear stop you. Instead, let that love that you have for God prod you and push you to do more for him. Let the love that he's giving you for others push you to loving others and serving others and caring for your neighbor more than you ever have before. Let that love push you and don't let fear hold you back. And it says a power love and of a sound mind. That means that clear thinking. It means that you're not distracted by the world. There's going to be so many things that come up in your ministry that are going to try to pull you away from God, try to pull you away from your family, pull you away from right with right. So many different distractions of this world. And we know that all the things in this world, they became, all of us can get so distracted by it. But Jesus said this, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things he will take care of. And all these other things will be added unto you. Have that sound mind. Have that clear thinking. Don't allow yourself to be distracted by fear or anything else. But don't fear and follow him wherever he leads. The second piece of advice I have for you is this. Do not be ashamed. This is what Paul writes again to Timothy in um, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. He says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor me his prisoner, but be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, 
not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But as now it's made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Wherefore, I am also appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Never be ashamed of the gospel. Never be ashamed of your faith. Never be ashamed of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, if you know Sam, he's not ashamed. Uh, one of the things that Sam is really well known for is his really dorky Christian t-shirts, okay? Um, if you've seen them, like the shirt that he's wearing in the picture behind, it's a Heinz ketchup logo and it says, catch up with Jesus, right? Um, or he shows Jesus lifting weights and says Jesus is the ultimate dead lifter, right? And raising people from the dead. Um, and so he has these things. But what's really, even though that's corny and goofy and you look so good in them, uh, even though it's all that, right? It opens up doors for the gospel. Even this past week, he was telling me that he had a friend that mentioned that at the gym, someone that he saw, and he was able to talk to Jesus about it. He's not been ashamed to share his faith and to share where his true hope lies in Jesus Christ. And so I say, Sam, continue to not be ashamed. Never be ashamed of that. Paul goes on here and tells Timothy, don't be ashamed of that testimony of the gospel of the Lord, but instead, be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. What that means is if you're going to follow Jesus in this life, there is going to be hardships that you're going to have to endure. If you're going to be a leader of others, a pastor to others, a servant to others, then you're, it's going to be the hardest thing that you've ever done. The next ministry you step into and as God continues to lead you, there's going to be harder things to come and harder things to come and harder things to come. You're going to have to make sacrifices. You're going to have to endure hardships again and again and again. But as he says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, endure that hardship as a good soldier for Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed and realize you're going to have to take part. It's going to mean that you're going to be afflicted sometimes. There's going to be people that look down on you, that mock you, that make fun of you. There's going to be people that mischaracterize you, thinking that you're a hateful bigot or a hateful person even though you love them. There's going to be all these afflictions to come. Just endure them. Keep coming on and don't be ashamed. Remember who it is that called you. It says here in verse 9, Who has saved us, and he called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace. Um, me and Sam were talking before, and he was sharing just some of his, um, just some of the things that kind of were on his mind, some anxieties about becoming a pastor. And, and one of those things was just like, man, what if I mess up? What if I'm not good enough? Things like this. And I told him, you know, it's never up to us in the first place, right? It's not, it's just like our salvation. We can never be good enough to be saved. We can never be good enough to make it to heaven on our own. Jesus had to die on the cross for our sins, and if we put our faith and trust in him alone, he can save us. He gives us eternal life. And the same thing goes with your future ministry. It's not about you being perfect and being good enough. This says that you're, he called you with a holy calling, not according to your own work. It wasn't about everything you've done. It's because his grace in your life. It's because his calling in you. So never be ashamed of that. He's called you for a purpose, and he's called you for a ministry. Never be ashamed. Be bold and follow him and serve him completely. The next thing I encourage you to do, number three, is to hold fast to the word. Hold fast to the word. Two verses here. 2 Timothy 1.13 says, Hold fast the form of sound words, the sound teaching I've taught you, which you have heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 4.2, then he says this, Preach the word word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. One of the things that I really admire about Sam, and it's something that, a characteristic that we should all hold very closely as followers of Jesus, is he's always put the word of God as the foundation of his life. As soon as he started being taught the word of God and learning what it meant, he made it his mission to make that the foundation. And um, I tell this story sometimes. So um, Sam, again, before he really was a follower of Jesus, um, he had a potty mouth, okay, like a really bad one. Uh, and he would tell dirty jokes and things like this. And I always I put it like this too. Sam used the F word as if like we only had a limited amount to use, and he was trying to get through them as much as possible, right? Um, so it was just like every other thing. 
And one day we were on the boats, so we were there at Shipshape talking, and he was like, wait, it's wrong to cuss? Like, where's that in the Bible? And I talked to him about, about how um, the Bible says that we should, um, uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, if you want to quote it, I can't remember what it is now. Um, <laughs> Bridle is not your tongue. Something like that. Anyways, it basically says, um, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good that it may minister grace to the hearers. Um, and so I was talking about not corrupt communication. He looked at the Word of God, and he saw that, and he said, oh, okay. And from that point on, point on, he started to try to change his speech. And that's been in the whole course of our whole time together. If he saw it in God's Word, he said, man, that's God's Word. That's God speaking it. i got to change and make my life like that. And so many of us will hear the Word of God. We'll hear something taught. And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll just go on living. But Sam has always taken the word of God seriously. And he says, man, if this is God's will, if this is what God wants, this is what God says, that's what I'm going to do. And I want to show a clip from one of his actually earlier sermons when he's talking about this very thing. Is it, is it ever seen with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul? So the engrafted word actually means something that becomes a part of us. And so the, the gospel and all these lessons in the Bible, especially the ones that Jesus are talking about, we, that has to be a part of us. We can't just listen to the word and go and continue on with our, our day-to-day lives and not remember it and not try to focus on, okay, well, Jesus said this, how am I supposed to act? How am I supposed to handle this situation? And so that's the only thing that's going to save our souls is because we, we honor that. We know that this word was given to us for a reason. It's not just to listen to it one time a week. Feel good about yourself and then go home and keep living your in our sinful ways. Um, and so that's that first chunk. So even that, you see his honor for the Word of God, that it should be something that changes us, that's something that's part of us. And so, Sam, I encourage you to continue to do that. Preach the Word, teach the Word, live your life according to God's Word, and then preach it. You know, as a pastor, it's not your job to preach your own opinions, not to talk about whatever thoughts that you have on this thing or that. It's not to talk about or teach people to observe your own personal preferences. It's to teach the Lord's command. Jesus said in the Great Commission, to go out, make disciples, baptize them, and then teach them everything I have commanded. When you teach people, it's not about you. It's about getting yourself out of the way so that you can teach them the word of God. And there's going to be a day, and it even says in the word, what he goes on to say is this to Timothy, that many are going to turn away from that truth. In 2 Timothy 4, he says this, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they'll keep to themselves teachers having itching ears, meaning they're going to bring them to tell teachers that tell them whatever they want to hear. And they shall turn their ears away from the truth and turn unto fables. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to speak the truth in love, like the Bible tells us to do. To tell the words of God, to tell people about their creator that created them and loved them and gives them a purpose that they would just follow him. And it means that you're going to have to be bold. And you're going to have to speak the truth in that love. But hold fast to the word. That's your foundation. Not what anyone else says. Not what any other cultural thing says. It changes every other day. The word of God. Make that your foundation and hold fast to it. The fourth thing is this. Do the work of an evangelist. You know, Sam has done this from the beginning. In 2 Timothy 4, um, this is what uh, Paul says. He says, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof your ministry. But that means that you're sharing the gospel with other people. And there are people in this room today um, that Sam that are only here because Sam has influenced and impacted their life. He's allowed God to work in him into their lives. Um, he started Amazon, and one of the first people that he met there was John. And then John never left, right? Which is awesome. Um, and, and John has been a good buddy there as well, and John, he's brought John along with him. Or, or others, John and Jessica, are in this room today because, because of Sam and his ministry and just being bold and sharing the gospel with others. There's this saying in, in ministry that found people find people. Once you realize that you have been saved by grace, it's like the song Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Once you realize that we were blinded in our sin, that we were lost without Jesus Christ, and that we've been saved, it should prod us to do that work with evangelists, to go out and tell others about how they can experience 
the same love of Jesus that we've experienced. And you've done that and continue to do that. Remember, that is your goal, is to fulfill the Great Commission, to make disciples of all nations, to see them baptized and included in the church, and then to teach them everything Christ has commanded. Remember that. Never leave off of sharing the gospel. Never leave off and never quit telling other people about Jesus and sharing the love of Christ and serving them and caring for them and telling them how their sins can be forgiven and how they can have a home in heaven and they can be assured of that. Never, ever stop sharing the gospel with others. And the last thing, the last part is this, last piece of advice, is stay faithful to the end. Stay faithful to the end. In um, 2 Timothy 1.14, it says, That good thing which was committed unto be keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. What he's saying there is, hey, that ministry that you've been given, that calling that God has been given, keep that. In 2 Timothy 4, Paul talks about it his own life. And he says, For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. This is right before his death. He says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that love at his appearing. Paul went through crazy amounts of hardship, being stoned, whipped, beaten, shipwrecked, all those things, but he never quit, never gave up. And I can encourage you, Sam and Maddie, stay faithful. Here it comes. <laughs> you have been... You've been so faithful so far um, to the Lord's, you know, changing your heart, changing your life, becoming a completely renewed person in the Lord by surrendering to this call to move here, to minister, and to start this church, and now to move again and to follow the calling of the Lord to move to continue your ministry in Ohio. You've been faithful. This picture, I love this picture. Um, this was our very first team meeting for branches. It happened here in an apartment here in San Francisco. And I think it's kind of cool that the shirt that you're wearing, another one of Sam's famous shirt, says don't quit. And it actually has a cross on it. It's another one of his Jesus shirts. Don't quit. And I'd encourage you guys, don't quit. Stay faithful to God. Stay faithful to the end. Faithful to your God, your Savior, who created you, who gave you a purpose, who put you two together, who gave you meaning. Stay faithful to him. Stay faithful to him. Stay faithful to the calling that he's given you. When we sat there in um, doing discipleship, and it was in Ohio, Sam even mentioned way back then, you know, in 2017, he mentioned that, man, maybe God's called me to be a pastor. And he had no idea what that meant, right? And I'm sure you now realize how you really didn't know what that meant. <laughs> and yet, God was already working to give you that calling way back then. And he's worked in your heart to fulfill that calling up until now. Stay faithful to that. Remember what he's called you to do, to minister the gospel to other people. And stay faithful to that calling. It's going to get hard. It's going to get tough. There's going to be people that betray you and hate you and scorn you. Stay faithful to God. Stay faithful to that calling. Stay faithful. This is important. Stay faithful to your family. Stay faithful to your family. There's an old pastor saying that says, if you don't have your family, you don't have a ministry. Your first ministry is always Maddie, Violet, Mesa, and other other parcel of kids that you can end up having. Okay, don't turn your eyes away from your family. Teach your kids to love Jesus, not to resent him or the church or the ministry. Put them first. Recognize, help them to know that they are loved and that, that they are your first ministry and that you care for them and that you don't put anyone else above them. Help them to love Jesus by the way that you treat them and teach them every day. And then stay faithful to them even above your kids. She is the love of your life. She is your partner in this ministry. She will be there by your side. She's your biggest supporter. When everyone else will put you down, she'll be there. When everyone else hates you, she's going to love you. She may hate you sometimes too, but she's still going to love you at the end of the day. She's going to be there for you to be your inspiration, your help, your counselor, your guide, your right hand. She will be there by your side. Stay faithful to her. Too many pastors have had a sad story 
of turning their eyes away from their family and away from their lives. Focus on them. Make them your priority. And stay faithful to your family. And I just want to encourage you guys as I finish this up is this. Sam and Maddie, stay faithful. And remember this. You don't have to be like anyone else. God created you. God created you exactly how he did. All your personality, the gift and strength that you have. I know that you guys have served alongside us for these past years. And you've watched us and you've modeled things after us. But remember, Maddie, you don't have to be you. You are exactly who God wants you to be. And he's giving you exactly the strengths that he wants you to have to serve him for the rest of your life. Sam, you don't have to be me. You will not disappoint me one little bit if you go out and do things completely different the way that I did them. Even different than the way I even maybe taught you. As long as you're sticking to the word of God, God made you exactly the way he made you. You don't have to be like me. You follow God's plan for your life. And you stay faithful to that. You guys stay faithful. You can see the blessings of the Lord pouring down on your lives every single day. Through the good times, through the bad times, the ups and downs, the victories and the defeats. When you continue to walk the path of Jesus and follow him with your whole heart, strength, and mind. And you continue to love people no matter what. You will see God's blessings rain down upon you in ways that you cannot possibly imagine. Ways you've already seen God bless. And you will continue to see him bless again. Stay faithful to each other, to your God, and to your calling. Those things I encourage you, Sam, to do. Those five things and continue to walk in his path. Don't fear. Don't be ashamed. Hold fast to the word. Do the work of evangelists. Stay faithful to the end. And Sam, I'm going to invite you up right now. This is the part where um, we're about to lay hands on Sam and officially ordain him, but... Um, there's questions, and we did this when we voted on you as, as a pastor, but there's these commitment questions. You can kind of think of these as, as the vow portion of like a wedding, um, but this would be just to know that you're committed and that you're committing before, before God, before your pastor, before your church to be a faithful servant of his. So here's uh, the questions. Do you commit, Sam, to loving God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind? Do you commit to conforming your mind, your actions, your attitudes to the example of Jesus? Do you commit to holding forth the truth of God's word even when culture is contrary to that truth? Do you commit to lead from humility, being servant-hearted, and putting others before yourself? Do you commit to remaining faithful, doing the work of an evangelist, and preaching the word faithfully? Do you commit to prioritizing your wife and your kids as your first ministry? Do you commit to staying married and staying faithful, true, and tender, and loving to Maddie as the Christ has loved the church and gave his life for her? Do you commit to the continual growth in the Word of God, in your prayer life, in the fruit of the Spirit, in the pastoral requirement, and to continue to abide in Christ? And finally, do you commit to willingly lay down this ordination if for any reason you become scripturally unqualified for pastoral ministry? All right. Well, I'm going to invite um, Maddie up, and Sam and Maddie have picked a few people out here um, to come and pray over them. So would you all also come up here, please? And you guys can sit here. <laughs> all right, we're going to um, uh, just pray over them now, and let's start on this side with Odette. We'll pray over, and you guys can pray over Sam. And if you would, we're going to, um, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, when they ordained um, the servants of God, these ministers that they were sending out, when they ordained Paul and Barnabas, it says they laid their hands on them, and they prayed over them and sent them out. And so if you would, just extend a hand and pray over them as we pray as well. So, Odette, you go ahead first. Heavenly Father, we thank you Goodbyes, beautiful. Lord, I just bring Maddy to you. He also family. I know they live in the church, the branches family, but Lord, I know that where you lead them, you will be behind them all the way. 
I just pray with all this uh, moving and the process, we are somewhat overwhelmed and all that, Lord. And I just pray that you will give them hope, peace, let everything will fall into its place, oh God. Pray with Madi, the strength, and you comfort her and you give her joy. And I know, Lord, that in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says there is a time for every season and everything there is a season and that the time for every purpose under heaven. And I know it's Madi's season and Madi's time, Lord, to follow where you lead her. And I just pray, Lord, I know we will miss them. But I pray, Lord, that you will always be with them and you will continue to bless them and even Sam, Lord, the whole family, Lord, that you will always take care of them and provide that for them and that they will be remain faithful to you, Lord, and I pray that you will strengthen their faith and not to take and not to, to fear for you are with them always. As you have promised, that you will not leave them nor forsake them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God, I just, um, as we come before you, Lord, I just want to thank you so much for Sam and Maddie and, and for what they have meant to me and to my family, Lord. And what they have meant to so many in this room, God, they have been faithful friends. They have been family. God, you use them in some incredible ways here in San Francisco, and I just thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of it, a part of their life, and a part of their um, journey with you, and, and to be able to watch them to grow and to strengthen their relationship with each other and their relationship with you, Lord, and, and that they now go on to start their ministry elsewhere. God, I just pray that you'll be with Maddie, yeah. that you will protect her, that you will encourage her heart, Lord. Um, you know what's ahead, God, and you know that um, ministering to people is hard, and it's not always appreciated, and um, it's not always easy, God. Sometimes you see the dirty, and you see the ugly, and you see the hard um, from everyone around you. And I just pray that you will strengthen her, protect her, God. Give her encouragement where she needs it. Give her the perfect set of friends and mentors and encouragers around her, Lord, that will lift her up when she is having a hard time and when it all becomes too much. God, I ask that you will protect her and help her to become the best mom that she can be, Lord, that she will show your love to Asa and to Violet, as I know that she already does, Lord, but that she will continue to do so and that you will help her to be the best mom that she can be in it. Asa and Violet will look at her and that they will see your love through her, Lord. And, um, I pray for Asa and for Violet that you will draw them to yourself, God, that they will come to know you at an early age, Lord, that they will love you and serve you all of their days, God, that they would, you would protect them from rebellion, that you would protect them from so many things that are hurtful to children um, growing up, Lord, and that you would just allow them just to serve you every single day of their life, God, and when they have doubts and when they have fears, that they would feel comfortable to come to Sam and Maddie, and that Sam and Maddie would have the wisdom to know what to do to deal with those um, difficult issues as your kid grows up, Lord. I pray specifically, God, that you would strengthen Maddie and that you would help her to always know that she is loved and that she is valued and that she is enough simply because she's your child. God, nothing else matters. What people think of her does not matter. Even at times, what she thinks of her when she's hard on herself doesn't matter, Lord, because you are the only one that matters and what you think about us. And we know that Maddie is your child, and because of that, she's a child of the King, and she has worth simply because of who she is, God. So I just pray that you will help her to always know that she is valued and that she is loved and that she is important, Lord, and that she has incredible gifts to give. Um, Lord, again, I just pray that you will be with them as they make this transition, that you will help it to be one, um, that they will look back and see your blessing, and they'll see your hand in it all, work it all out um, for your good, for their good and for your glory, Lord. And again, I just want to thank you so much for allowing me and my family to be a part of the dad's story and to be able to watch them and to learn from them and, and just to be their friend and to be their family and all that they've meant to us, I just ask that you will help them to always remember how loved and appreciated that they are. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Dear Lord, it is such a privilege to be able to stand before you and to pray for Maddie and for Sam. 
Lord, in the last two years that I've known both of them, I'm just in awe of their kindness, their hard work, their humility, their faithfulness. And I just pray that as they are um, both uh, proclaiming that they want to follow you and they want to be willing to do whatever you, whatever you call them, I do pray, Lord, that you protect them because anyone who wants to live for Jesus will be attacked. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would be uh, with Sam. But, Lord, I know that you know, Maddie is his greatest supporter, Lord, and he cannot do his ministry without her. They are partners in this. And I pray that you would just um, give her your strength, give her your uh, grace. Lord, it's, it's so challenging to be um, a woman, a wife, a mother, Lord, who wants to, to serve Jesus. So I just pray that you would uh, help her to um, have your peace, to seek your direction always. Lord, I pray that you would surround her with people um, in Ohio that, that love you and love her and her family. I pray, Lord, that she would help her as she um, raises her children, Lord. And I just pray that uh, you would protect them also, Lord, help them to come to know you at an early age. Lord, there's so many things that are unknown. And I just, I know from watching Sam and Maddie these last two years that they are ready and willing to do whatever you call them to do. And Lord, I just pray that you would make it so clear to them what your will is in your leading, in your direction. And Lord, I just am so thankful for the example that they have been to me. And I'm thankful for their friendship. And Lord, I just pray that they would know that our prayers, our love, go with them always. And we can't wait to hear what you're doing in their lives and the lives of the people that you're putting in their in their life. And I just thank you so much for both of them, Lord. And Jesus, I pray. Heavenly Father, God, I'm just so grateful that what you're doing in Sam and Maddie's lives, I'm just so honored to be here in this moment. God, you had plans for their lives before they were even born. God, you knew this day would happen. You knew you had a plan that everything that they were going through for their whole lives, leading up to this moment, leading up to their calling, leading up to ministry, God. You've been preparing them. And God, they've already demonstrated so much. Thank you so much, Lord, that they've been such an inspiration to me, to those around us. And thank you, God, for using Sam, the way he loves, the way he expresses his joy for you, Lord, is so contagious and I pray that he brings that with him in his ministry. I pray that you continue to grow his heart, to bring him up with wisdom and patience, with all the trials that may come forward, Lord, that you will carry him, that you will provide him the strength to go through anything that comes their way. And God, I pray that your hand is in their household working in their lives each and every day when they feel alone, when they feel the struggle God, remind them God that your sacrifice what you've done God can carry them through no matter what they're going through and God I'm just so grateful that you brought them into my life and inspired me I can't say how grateful I am how you've touched my life, Sam, Maddie, welcoming me into your homes and being such an awesome friend. I'll never forget how you made me feel, just always being there for me. And I pray that you can touch the lives of those around you in your ministry, that you can continue to touch the lives for God and for his glory. Thank you, Sam and Maddie for demonstrating godly, godly works and, and just being so faithful and obedient. I pray that the same courage, the same fire, the same boldness as you go out 
to you, <coughs> ministry, that you can have this deep in your heart and never forget. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us, for branches, for me, and for God. In Jesus' name. I want to thank you, Lord, for these two people here, Maddie and Sam, that they have helped your ministry grow in San Francisco and that you are using them to move your ministry forward in Ohio and touch so many lives that they don't even know yet. And they've, as they touched our lives here in San Francisco and branches, I thank you, Lord, that you keep them safe and protect them on their journey and that they know that their family, they have family here in San Francisco anytime. And that the, the Lord keep them strong in Jesus' name. Our God, we thank you for this wonderful day. And we thank you for our church family that has, has just seen the gifts and the abilities and just the maturity of Sam and just his calling and confirming that today as we ordain him. Lord God, I do just pray and echo those that have prayed already, Lord, that you protect them, that you keep Sam and Maddie, Lord, that you would protect their children, Asa and Violet, Lord, that you help them to stay faithful to you and follow you wherever you may lead. And God, we just pray that you would rain your blessings upon them each and every day as they seek to follow you. We love you, Lord, and we pray these things in your son's name. Amen. 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 All right. All right, yeah. All right. So, uh, final thing here. Um, Matt, you can stay up here, too. So, Sam, um, by the authority of God and the branches of Baptist Church, we are now presenting you with your certificate here of ordination. And it says this, it says, We undersigned upon recognition of the request of the Branches Baptist Church of San Francisco, which had full and sufficient opportunity for judging the God-given gifts after satisfactory examination by us in regard to the Christian experience, call to ministry, and views of Bible doctrine, hereby certify that Samuel Dagg was solemnly and publicly set apart and ordained to the work of the gospel ministry by the authority and order of Branches Baptist Church in San Francisco. So, congratulations, my friend.
We love you guys. Thank you so much. This has been hands down. You guys are all like our friends, our family. And we couldn't be here without every single one of you guys um, surrounding us with all your love and support. So thank you guys. Also, also, it was not an easy decision to go back to Ohio. It, it seems like God just knew what was going on. That was one of the hardest decisions of my life. This is family here. This is one of the biggest things that has ever happened in my life. And I want you all to know that, that I care about each and every one of you guys. I pray for you. I love you. This is hard. This is one of the hardest things that we've ever done. And this isn't about the ordination. It's about the moving. And I'm so sorry. But I just love you guys so much. And I want you guys to know that. that it's not running away. We're running to a mission. Uh, and we just know that God's going to take care of you guys here and provide for you guys and give you everyone you need. And so we just, we, we know that. We trust that and we believe that. So we thank you guys. Amen. All right. Well, um, we, uh, we're going to have one more song and uh, then be dismissed. And so... We'll have this song that we'll do. Um, I want to encourage you. Uh, at, in in your the party is now now it's time to party. Okay, um, so we're gonna we're gonna party, and so we're gonna have that at my house. Uh, you can look at in your handout. If you didn't get a handout, ask somebody near you, or ask me, or ask Sam. We can give you the address that you need um, to come over. But it's gonna be a good time. It starts at one o'clock, and we encourage you to be there just to celebrate and have a good time with us. But let's go ahead and sing, and then we'll be done. Alright, you guys would stand with us one last time. Sing an old song, but a good song. So sing it out, my Jesus, I love you.
you guys so much for being here today, being part of the story of Sam and Maddie and just everything God's going to use them to and continue to use them to. Um, we're just going to go ahead and pray. Remember, you're all invited to after party. Um, it's a fun time just eating and hanging out together. Um, I'm going to go take this pie off. Uh, Sam, maybe wear this. Um, but we're going we're gonna to get out there and we're going to have a good time together. So you're all invited. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray and then we'll be dismissed. Thank you guys for being here with us today. Lord God, again, we thank you for everything that you have done. Lord, your majesty, your beauty, your sovereignty, your grace, your mercy, your love for us is so, so abundant, Lord. And it's made even more apparent to us that no Sam and Matt. Lord, because you have loved us through sending them. Lord, you've loved us by their service to us. You've loved us by using them as being our friends, our church family members. Lord God, and I just thank you so much for all that you've done in their lives, and I pray, God, that you can be like